So I want to start off this video by saying um, cheers to everyone who's been commenting on my recent uh, outburst of Flintlock videos. Uh, Flintlock really is my passion. It's been my passion for quite a few years. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I just thought it'd be nice to kind of show the world. Like, there's not that much Flintlock stuff on the internet at the moment. And it came up in the uh, Flintlock community that that was the case. And I don't want that to be the case. So I want to help out in whatever way I can. And the way that I can is on YouTube. So if you know anyone who might be interested in this sort of game, please do try and get involved. It doesn't cost a lot to get involved. And yeah, let's try and support this game. It's quite an old one. But it's definitely had a modern boost recently. Okay. So I want to start off by talking to you about War in Catalusia which is the very first Flintlock uh, game book for the third edition of the Flintlock rules. So the way it works now is that you can buy uh, different source books. So there's War in Catalusia, Death in the Snow, and Beer and Bones. And there's a couple more that are planned. But um, each one of those has got all the rules and everything you need to play the games in them, except the models and dice and the table. Okay, But it's got all the rules and all that stuff. But anyway, so... War in Catalusia. So, Flintlock itself is a fantasy skirmish game uh, that's 28mm scale and it's set in the world of Valon in an age of muskets and cavalry. So, it's a fantasy world, but in between that, you've got uniforms, you've got muskets, and a very, very, very strong Napoleonic flavour. Okay? The Ferak Emperor Mordred, who's a high elf, has overthrown his mother Morgana and started a campaign in Catalusia the home of the Dark Elves, and Algarve, the home of the Goblins. Um, because of his attack on the Goblins, the Orcs of Albion, the oldest ally of the uh, Goblins, have decided to uh, get involved too. And as such, war breaks loose all over Valon. Okay? <clears throat> war in Catalusia is the first book in a series of books, just like I said, and it's published by Alternative Armies. Okay. So the book covers all the rules for the Catalusian campaign and, and the main rules themselves. So let's actually have a look inside. Okay. So obviously it's written by Gavin Syme, a good friend of mine, and Michael White, who is a very, very big American fan of um, Flintlock. Okay. So we start off with a map of Europe, which is a part of Valon and it kind of goes through all the continents and not all the continents all the um, nations in Flintlock okay but we start off and we find some background illustrated throughout and the book, the book explains to you what Flintlock is all about okay So it moves on and it talks quite in depth about the whole theatre of war of uh, Catalusia. And then it also contains some characterful scenarios that you can actually play, like this one, Taran Vera Bleeds. Okay? These are quite quick little scenarios that you can play in an hour or two. And that's the idea of Flintlock. It's a quick play game that doesn't take too long to play. It takes a little while to set up, but once you've got it set up and going, it's great fun to play. Okay? So, after this, you move on to a section about the actual armies. So this is the Army of Albion, okay? It talks to you about the structure, the soldiers, the troops, and then what is in the army. And along with that, it also talks about uniforms and stuff like that. So, for example, got the 105th Rifles here. Probably the most popular Flintlock unit, sorry about the flashy light here. So it discusses a bit about background, what they are, and they are Albion's green jacketed rifle orcs led by uh, Captain Reckhart Shark, who, if anyone watched any um, British television in the 90s, they might remember the Sharp series. It's based on that, and there's also the books as well, obviously. Okay? So, obviously, it does talk about uniforms, but those aren't an end all. You can make them up if you want. You can make up your own units. Um, we even had a competition on one of the groups a couple of years ago to invent our own unit and we did that. Okay? So don't feel like you need to follow the uh, colour schemes and stuff. Anyway, 
So after that, if we move on, sorry, they're my notes. I don't like going off on a tangent, so what have we got? Here we go. So we've got a few more scenarios, big scenarios. And then we have got how to create a section. Okay. So a section is kind of the group of models that you will use in a game of Flintlock. Um, it talks about how to create characters and stuff like that. So um, you design your band of models and each character within that band will have like individual characteristics. So traits, flaws and skills. Okay. And then finally, after we get through all the traits and flaws and skills and stuff, we end up with the actual rules. Okay, so this is the in-depth version of the rules. Still, it's very simple to play. It's a percentile system, so you use a D100, which is 2D10, and um, that's mainly how the game is played, but there are some other just normal D10 rolling actions. Um, but I'll talk about that more in another video, so I'll do an actual run through how the rules kind of work using the Flintlock Lite document that you can get for free. Okay, um, what else was I going to say? So the game works at skirmish level, so activation works in a manner that's a little bit different, so you only move two models at a time. So one player will move two, then the other player will move two, and then you keep doing two until one player has got loads of models left and he gets to move the rest of his army. Okay. Um, there's a few different types of actions, but each model can take two of those. Again, I'll talk about that in more detail in another video. So, apart from that, there's just not that much in here really, apart from that. So you've got all the rules for the guns, and you've got the um, quick reference sheets, which again, you can either pull them out of your book, because uh, they are perforated, or you can uh, get scans and stuff off the internet. Okay, so Flintlock is a really, really well supported game. Okay, uh, it's got quite a small fan base, or it's got a big fan base, but quite a small uh, population of that fan base actually go on the internet and talk about it. So there is quite a lot of support out there. There's a website called Barking Irons, there's also a website called Orcs in the Web, and then you can obviously email the guys at Alternative Armies, and they're really, really good at responding to questions queries, um, suggestions even, they really like it when people suggest stuff because it gives the sculptors some idea of what they need to sculpt, what's popular. Um, but yeah, there's also the Notable Yahoo group, which I go on quite frequently, um, just because it's a great source of information for Flintlock, and you often get the opportunity to playtest new stuff too, so get on that, it's, it's a great thing to be part of, and it's good to have your say. So. Um, should you want to get started with this, um, you can either get this book and any models you want, or you can get the shilling service packs which alternative armies do. So the book's £15, or the service pack is £30, which comes with the book, and insert on some scenarios on getting started in Flintlock, and six jockey and rat models like this guy, and five Ferrak elf chasseurs, and one L'Esprit de Garde elf on a horse. Um, and you obviously you get 2d10 and that's just a great way to get started but they've got quite a few of those packs, they've done one for each game book that they've brought out so far. But again I'll talk about those in more detail at some point. This one doesn't cover all the races in Flintlock, it just covers the one in Catalusia. But anyway, so cheers for watching guys, I hope that's been helpful. If you want to know more just ask some questions and I'll see what I can do for you. So cheers for watching guys. Bye-bye.